Catherine Flowers is the Senior Fellow of Environmental Justice and Civic, Civic Engagement at the Center for Earth Ethics. Now, she's also the founder of Alabama Center for Rural Enterprise Community Development Corporation, known as ACRE, which is easier to say, and I wish I didn't have to say the first part, I could have just said ACRE. An organization which seeks to address the root causes of poverty by seeking sustainable solutions. She joins us now to discuss the connection between the environment the community and health and equality. Catherine, thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. We've talked a little bit before the interview, but let's jump into it. So you grew up in a rural county in Alabama um, and tell me about the changes that you saw in that area over the past year. Well, I grew up in Lowndes County, Alabama and Lowndes County is located between Selma and Montgomery. And some of the changes that I've seen over the course of time has been uh, a longer growing season. Mm -hmm. um, there were times when we had four seasons and now it looks like we may have two and then lately it seems like it's so erratic. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether it's going to be fall or summer or spring. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing uh, stronger storms, uh, more rain. Uh, we're getting the kinds of rain uh, events in a short amount of time that we didn't have before. I noticed um, the type of uh, animals. I used to teach geography. Mm -hmm. So in teaching geography to junior high school students, we would look at the, the, the topography, we would look at the type of animals that would be in arid environments. So we would see animals now, we're seeing animals like um, armadillos yeah. that we generally didn't see there before. So clearly there's some, there's some changes. In my, in my yard, for an example, I see uh, I have palm trees growing. There was a time, even several years ago, when I first planted those trees, I had to cover them every year. I don't have to when cover When the winter came. When the winter came. I don't yeah. have to do that anymore. Well, I can tell you from forecasting weather for 35 years, what mm -hmm. you're experiencing a lot of other people are talking about as well. Mm -hmm. Health and equality for your community and those like yours became kind of a, a a strong life work for you because of an experience that you had. And I'm talking about um, when you were bitten by mosquitoes and it's much different than it sounds, so explain that story. Well, um, I've been an activist for quite some time in Lowndes County because a lot of people there have raw sewage on the ground. And I was called to a site by some members that worked at the State Health Department, and they wanted me to go to this home, and it was in, during the month of October, and uh, it had rained a lot. So there was a pit of raw sewage that was in the back of this woman's mobile home, it was a trailer, and the raw sewage was teeming with mosquitoes. And I had on a dress at that particular time, and they bit me. They actually bit me through my hose, because I had on hose that day. And I went to my doctor, because I broke out in a rash, and I asked her uh, to run you know, tests on my blood to make sure I hadn't caught anything, sure. because these mosquitoes were on raw sewage. And it's more than a little bite. Oh, it was more. I had several bites. Yeah. But what happened, I broke out in a, in a rash throughout my body even places where the mosquitoes didn't bite me. Wow. So she ran the test to try to figure out what was wrong. Uh, the test came back negative and I asked her, is it possible that there's something going on here in the United States that doctors in this country are not testing for? Because first, they don't expect to deal with raw sewage. Second, it was, it was October with mosquitoes. You know, generally, we didn't We've have had a freeze. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't have mosquitoes in October. So anyway, she said it's very possible. And then later I read an op-ed piece that was written by Dr. Peter Hotez, who is the founding dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor. And we, uh, I shared with him, I, I found his information, emailed him, told him about my experience, uh, met him, and he said, we're going to look for hookworm. He's a tropical disease expert and we uh, collected fecal soil water and blood samples and we found evidence of hookworm and other tropical parasites in Lowndes County, Alabama, which is between Selma and Montgomery. It's stunning and I don't think that people understand until they hear a story and I think people will say, ah, maybe it's not real until they hear your story. Diseases that are more typically found in tropical areas or developing nations like Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia have crept into new areas just like you're talking about. What kinds of tropical diseases, other than the hookworm, are we finding, are, are people telling you that we're finding? Well, I know we found, um, we also found Toxicaria, we found uh, Entamoeba histilica, we found Strongyloides. I mean, these are, are illnesses that people tend to associate with someone who may have gone out of the country to a tropical yeah, I'm, region. I'm not even familiar with them in this area. Yeah, and most American doctors aren't even trained to look for them. But as the temperature gets warmer, 
as we experience more climate change, we're going to have more of these kinds of illnesses. Actually, uh, one person I met when I shared my story about the mosquitoes said that the symptoms that I exhibited could have also been the symptoms of Zika because it's very similar. Of course. Yeah, and Zika is one of those things that we are seeing much farther north in the U.S. In, in some cases, and certainly in the state that I live in, Florida, we had to go through a bit of it there. Now, why are poor areas kind of more prone to feeling the effects of these environmental issues that we're talking about? You know, well, why is it one area and not another? Well, in a lot of these poor areas, especially the poor rural areas, there hasn't been a, a sustained investment by the government in infrastructure to address these issues. First of all, people would not expect that in the United States of America, there are people that have raw sewage on the ground. Right. That's something that they would expect to find in other parts of the world. Most people would say they wouldn't believe it if you told them, right? Yes, well actually, I invited the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty to come to Alabama last year, and when he went to uh, Lowndes County and saw these conditions, a reporter asked him uh, how did he, you know, what, what were his feelings about this. He said this is very uncommon in the first world. But even with that, in these poor communities where there have not been a sustained investment in putting in place infrastructure for those communities, working infrastructure at that, we're going to have more and more of these problems. Also, the other problem is that a lot of infrastructure that's in place was not built to sustain climate change. These were this was infrastructure that was put in place years before and people didn't take into account climate change. And we're going to have to redesign the way we deal with infrastructure. Even if we put in place the infrastructure that was designed for 20 or 30 years ago in these areas that I, never got it, it, it's not going to work. Because when we get these deluges of rain, what is happening in places like Lowndes County and other places is that the sewage, if those that have it, it fails and it runs back into their of homes. Of course, yeah, and in so many areas as well. Uh, and in, and thankfully for people, there's people who know the right questions to ask and can ask it of the right people like you. Mm -hmm. So what is your goal as an environmental advocate? I mean, if you want to bring diverse people together, young people together, how do you do it? What's your goal? Well, what I have done, I've been working with Duke University and other universities by actually bringing young people out on the front line so they can see this firsthand. And when I say, I'm from the country, you know, I'm a country girl. So what I do, I tend to, to connect young people with people living in these communities where they can sit on the porch with mom and them and let them talk about what they see. Because oftentimes they're validating, uh, they're saying the same thing the scientists are saying. They're on the ground, they're being impacted by it. And their stories can be lifted up. So that's one way in which we're doing it. And we're going to announce uh, in the coming months the Center for Rural Enterprise and Environmental Justice, where we're going to actually institutionalize the work that we do and try to get more and more young people involved. And hopefully, uh, part of the change that needs to come will come from young people and those of us that are older working with them to help find solutions to the climate crisis. I thank you for the work that you're doing and the voice that you're using. And from thank a you. country boy to you, I'm from McCracken County, Kentucky. Okay. So we're not too far away. <laughs> I thank you for what you're doing. Catherine, thank you, thank you so, you so much. much for joining us.